Oh, what's going on guys welcome back to a brand new video on the second channel inside of today's video we finally got around to reviewing the apac monthly finals so this happened nearly two weeks ago now so the meta would have shifted a little bit but it's just good to take a look back at it again i saved this for a video but with just a bunch of things going on i just left it pretty late so you can see the bands right here so in terms of the teams as well it's navi versus crazy raccoon navi i believe didn't make the first monthly final in the apac region and it's always a bit of a grudge match when it's a uh, charpe versus tensai side tempo you know it's going to be a good match it's literally the battle of the goats so first pick chuck last time if i'm not mistaken uh crazy raccoon couldn't really defend against chuck too well when it was on bridge too far against angelic so be interested to see whether they can actually handle it this time around colt and Colette, good picks as well I'm not too sure how all of these brothers are making it through the draft in terms of uh crazy raccoon's bans like i guess they're confident in counter and chuck this time around but normally in other regions people don't ban bell they don't ban eve they ban chuck they ban melody and then they ban probably like angelo or something like that so i'm surprised i've not seen an angelo yet like why haven't i seen an angelo on either side like angelo is insane on safe zone it can get countered by some aggression maybe they're scared of max for example but at the same time angelo actually is a great counter to chuck when i was pushing chuck on safe zone i thought you know angelo was always an annoying brother's face off against sam okay so it looks I i'm excited to watch this uh, probably some of you guys already watched this already but sam for crazy raccoon that is that is a new crazy raccoon if you guys don't know the kind of but the biggest drawback to crazy raccoon is that they don't typically go like tanks or like you know these type of options which you typically see come from na you know sam pretty much is an na pick just like ash for example and that's one thing i think really lets them down because mechanically they're insane like on the snipers and everything else but sometimes that leaves them a little bit op open to get countered for the draft you saw that in world finals last year you also saw that just in a lot of monthly finals which you know i did make a few comments on you know for example they'll go like triple sniper and dueling beetles but mechanically they're so gifted so that's why they go those type of rulers so uh with sam sam's gonna be good into like piper and b if you can just constantly get the aggression but at the same time chuck definitely is better b is a good counter as well to both uh colt and colette so i can see why they've drafted that boy's gonna go straight in here that's already two knockbacks uh gone down from the piper side tampo is gonna be careful here in case levi gets his super again he is gonna miss that on the safe though which could come down to cost him in the long run but now this is a lot better again moya is gonna have a tough tough matchup against the Charpe if he decides to use his knockback just use it one more he's using the extra gadget gear against that that's at least two maybe even three gone already and Navi just getting more percentage it's just easier to get damage with Chuck so easy but let's see here if Moya can finally push up uh, I mean he's just gonna feed Chuck a little bit more that's sort of like a 40% deficit already they get the wall break going I don't know like CL's comps a bit misjointed like they haven't really got a mid brawl especially against the piper that's a really good gadget though from moya side tampo's got his hypercharge as well but that's just gonna level the playing field pretty quickly somehow he stays alive against two of them for a long time now tenzai can push up but the thing is with the colt and collect comp it just takes one hypercharge uh colt one hypercharge collect and that's literally the game won just like that so i guess that's kind of their thinking there but still 25 percent left they can get a lot of damage still with one super and a uh, Colt hypercharge. I know it's not over for sure. Here comes the hypercharge from Saitampo. Tensai's probably going to pop his pretty soon once he realizes people are weak. Levi's going to go in here and they need to go fast. They need to pop this hypercharge from Colt really fast or else they're going to end it. 900 damage and they lost. That is unfortunate. That oh. I mean, they kind of got lucky there because I don't know. I felt like uh, I, don't, I don't know. This is a very precious situation. They're probably off of just intuition you feel like you've got enough damage there to finish the high safe but if you really like what pro players typically do like straight away i was thinking that scenario semantic wouldn't have let that happen for example because he just knows the numbers he knows how much damage all of the time chuck super does you know all of these different rulers i think knowing the damage can come into play literally in that instance right there because quick thinking that's the thing that wins your rounds and whatever else but again it is a little bit unlucky because it was like 500 hp on a save so a lot better this time from cr looks like they've adapted pretty well they get sam on a safe which does actually do a lot of damage since this super damage buff not too long ago does actually forget his knuckles but it doesn't matter they're literally 70 percent lead which is pretty wild and it's just looking like if i can just keep the pressure going with sam they should be able to win because pressure always wins 
and high. So there's a hypercharge collect super. Moy's just gonna go forward and try and tank as much as possible. Pipe is weak. Bee's weak. That's really unfortunate though because that would look like a prime opportunity to get some damage onto the safe. Levi should be able to push forward here, but the problem is there's only 30% uh, left on his safe, and Chuck just can't defend. So if Crazy Raccoon just keep going in time time again, there's not much that they can really do. But again, he's still clawing the percentages back a little bit. So Navi looking like they've got a little bit going for them. Also, I didn't actually mention uh, the kind of, actually, there's no point actually mentioning it just yet. Probably we'll mention it next round whilst we're going through the draft. But it looks like Crazy Raccoon should be able to finish this one off. So that's absolutely beautiful from them. I mean, we've got lucky in the first round of the set, but after that, it looks like they've really got the plan with Sam getting in behind and then Colt just beaming the save. That's why I just love Colt in the safe zone so that's gonna be the first set let's hop into the next one all right guys jumping into the next game well the next set we have a uh, hot zone jordan beetles so this map this is literally what i was talking about last set is that the draft definitely did a little bit of working from crazy raccoon but they got the mechanics to match it so that's why they're um they're definitely working on things you can see so m's good counter into sandy to be fair you can outright range sandy especially on jordan beetles we've seen a lot more m's in jordan beetles right now we see a byron as well to pair with it again i've seen the synergy a lot through monthly finals the draft's coming in pretty quick so i can't even really talk about it melody i'm surprised melody made it through draft so late on in terms of first pick bands we see pam angelo and charlie we're seeing pam ban a lot a lot in um and Jordan Beatles at the moment. I like to see it. I like Pam in the meta. Also, I'm trying to think what's a good counter to this. Maybe like a stew? I, I don't really know. You need something that can keep distance. Probably like a Griff. You want to open up the map against the M's. But then again, pff, Griff just isn't the greatest of brawlers. I don't know. Let's see what they pick towards the end. Let's have a look. Come on. Is the draft broken? I guess the draft is probably broken. My guess is that they would have gone something like a Griff, maybe like an Amber to keep the distance. It's pretty hard against uh, Emzo um, pushing forward with Byron, but go with a Cordelia. So Cordelia can be a pretty good counter, to be fair, especially with the jump. You can literally jump over Emzo's um, damage. They go with the Nita. Okay, I mean, this is a very different kind of better that I'm used to in Jewel and Beatles. Nita, Ems. Sandy, like these are brothers that we typically don't see in a Julian Beatles meta, maybe in like gold ranked in the past, but I like it a lot different. This just goes to show the new meta, and even now, after a couple of weeks after it, it's just what it's pretty much like. So, one thing I wanted to highlight quickly is that Crazy Raccoon actually should have been in like an internet uh, cafe with really good Wi Fi. I don't know if they traveled to Hong Kong or not, but they did definitely travel somewhere. But the um, you can see here, side tempo lags out, which is really unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, they had some problems. So they, I think some of them traveled back to the hotel. And of course, hotel Wi-Fi is pretty trashy to play on, especially for a monthly final. So just bear that in mind. That's why I was a bit reluctant to really uh, highlight and um, cast over it. Because I, I just hate internet problems. Because pros shouldn't have to really deal with that. Especially right now. Like, this should might be lands like the good old days. Anyways, Sad Tampo looks like he's reconnected here. And they're already 40% down, which is pretty terrible i don't know how they're really going to come back into this especially on dueling beetles it's pretty hard especially when you don't have much range because the opponents can just sit behind walls keep their distance and just everything like that but it looks like moya's eventually got onto the zone here the good thing about nita is that they're just going to feed a lot of bears especially from melody especially from the cordelius nita is a fantastic counter i mean melody can just keep the distance right here but i'm not too sure why they didn't just ban out melody she can just get so much pressure over time but it looks like they've finally got their groove here but they need to just sit behind walls. I mean, literally, Nita and M's are the perfect brawlers to sit behind walls and just poke at the opponents all of the time. So we've got a Sandy Hypercharge pretty soon. The Charpy goes with the uh, Jump and Shadow Realm, which isn't great into Nita, as he's just seen, because Nita has so much health that it's really hard for Cordelius to really do anything about that. But look at this. The percentages are slowly clawing back. Looks like... Um, I can't even pronounce his name. I'm just going to call him Sizz. <laughs> I know who he is, but I'm just terrible at pronunciation. Gets a really good play with uh, Melody. Just try and dash into a Nita Bear, which I guess is okay because Sandy can get uh, the kill. But it looks like Chop is going to get pinched down here. Levi really trying his best to get the last bit of percentages. And CR just always have that clutch factor. Like, look at Ted's side. Ted's, he's such a beautiful human. And he's just chilling in the hotel room. Like, <laughs> he's just laughing. Even, I don't know, my head would be gone. If I'm having to play in a hotel with their trash Wi-Fi, like, I would be screaming. And even uh, Navi, just like they're in, like, a 
I think they're in an internet cafe or something because I've seen some like people walking in the background. I think it's just hilarious to me. I love the play cams. Too funny, right? Looks like they've made some adjustments. M's in the middle is actually pretty underrated. You can see here, literally the whole attack just covers that area. And the opponents are going to have to push into that pretty much all of the time. But that's a great play from the Melody there, Melody there being able to get in behind enemy lines. And just look at the damage from Melody's notes. It's just... It's just crazy to me. The amount of HP, the amount of damage it does, just uh, being able to fly around the map so much. She's insane. And I'm, again, I'm surprised that she's even been left in the draft. So again, you can just go on the M's, even though she's got knockback. You can just remove those knockbacks eventually and you should be good to go. Sad Tampo doing a good job of keeping his super there. I think he meant to auto aim that onto the Cordelius, but it doesn't matter. He's tapping and he cycles through to another super. But Byron is just so so good right now and it's so satisfying when you cycle through super side quick and just finish off kills like that it's just too good so choppy gets the kill on tanita this time around but it doesn't matter once he pops out the shadow realm he's just going to get killed again melody just flying in against a byron against an ems it's just such a great counter that's the biggest problem with byron by far is that he can't defend himself against aggros so that's what you've always got to be careful of super again a little bit of a misplay but again i can't really blame him especially when he's on hotel wi-fi but it's like Moya just survives there. A clutch Sandy Super in the right moment. Just get a double tap onto side tempo as well. And that's going to be full control going the way of Na'Vi. Again, a Charby going maybe a little bit aggro here. Has to fall back. A hypercharge could have actually gone the wrong way there because it looks like he nearly missed some shots to get the hypercharge Super. But it doesn't even, doesn't even matter. They overwhelm them in the end. So they'll be getting this round of this set. So again, that time... I don't know what really went on. I think Melody just had too many pop-off plays, which is hard to contain, all right? Like, how can you contain a brawler that has three dashes? It's really hard. You need to, like, win the first engagements, or you just need to get a spawn trap going. I think you're really relying off Nita Bears being the biggest issue, but if she can just dash away from them, like, what else can you really do in that scenario? There's not much you can really do. I love how Tensai is still laughing. Like, bro, he just... How, how can you actually defeat him? I, I, I'm actually wondering. Like, the only way that you can defeat him is if they make mistakes himself uh, like for example they went um jackie on this map in world finals which a lot of people were screaming as soon as they picked it as like a throw pick so like literally the only way you can defeat them is if they end up throwing in the draft so if they improve their draft how can they beat these guys they're absolutely insane so good super from side tampo here is eventually going to get oh no he gets the kill on melody that is just crazy and bit of a waste of super but at the same time if he's using malaise which i think he should be yeah he's using malaise especially against uh melody well actually all the brawlers are kind of above the mid slash high hp you know sandy cordelius all not really squishy characters are they but this is much better from cr they're just able to get a lot of pressure especially with bruce he can just waste so much ammo from the sandy and they're just all sitting on his own here even if like one of them gets taken down like if for example um Benita again I mean, here's me saying that Cordelius shouldn't be uh, going on to Anita, but he gets the kill pretty much every single time. But again, the problem is, when he gets the kill, there's always the CR player able to get the uh, trade out. So that's actually going to be 2-0 to Crazy Raccoon here. They're doing a fantastic job. I'm loving the drafts. They're a lot different, and it looks like they're learning a lot. So for me, they look so, so solid. All right, guys, jumping into set number three, we've got Bell's Rock on Knockout. So this map's actually removed from the BSC rotation and the ranked rotation. So interesting to see what the meta really is here in the APAC region. So go with Gene first pick, which is pretty solid. And literally, I was about to just literally say, like, are they going to go with the same strategy with Miko and Kit like we saw in the NA monthly finals, even though Technic, well, yeah, th this happened way before the NA monthly finals. But I'm just wondering, like, Kit is a solid brawler in Knockout right now. People are sleeping on it, have been for a long time. And the same with Gus. They literally love uh, Gus in the APAC region. It's one of their best picks, like Bell as well, for example. They just love their sharpshooters that have a lot of versatility. And that's why they go with Byron as well. I feel like if Byron's ever going to be good in the region, it is the APAC region. But again, it's just kind of extended itself onto EU. Not so much NA. They don't really like Byron too much. But trust me, it's a very solid option. So there's surely got to be a counter here. Like you've got Gray, Byron, and Gene. There's three brawlers that have no DPS. I can't think of a brawl off the top of my head, especially with a good synergy with Kit. Like, I would literally just go Miko and Kit again. Or I would go, like... Actually, I won't really go Sam because you got Grey Hooks to destroy your walls. I would go... Yeah, okay, Buster. I don't know why I didn't think of Buster. But in my head, I was, like, thinking, like, is there a tankier brawler that can push up easily? Like, that's literally Buster. 
bread and butter. So for me, I think it's a clear, clear outdraft on the side of Na'Vi. You've got Kit on Buster, and then like Kit can just destroy Byron easily, for example. Kit can get literally destroy any of these except for Gene because of uh, Gene's HP and the knockback if he decides to use that. So I mean, it's winnable from Crazy Raccoon. It's not like absolutely crazy outdraft. Like it's winnable if they can destroy the walls, get some good gene pulls, especially onto like Gus. Uh, but the problem is again, like when you do pull someone with Gene, you're not gonna have much backup with Gray and Byron, are you? So he actually goes with Grand Piano. So that is interesting. I guess like you kind of remove the element of having to hit the um, Walking Cane. And you just look at this. Is he using four gadgets? I think he's only using... Yeah, he's using three. So he's just saying, bro, I'm just opening up everything. You can't do anything about it. Again, like, it removes that kind of... If you move, if you miss a couple of walking canes, then you're actually screwed. So I guess they just want to destroy those walls straight away. That's, that's kind of clever. I rate that from Tensai. But now, it's just... Acharpe is just going to sit here, try and build up his super. I've seen this in, EA, in uh, EMEA monthly finals, I think. Where the Buster just sat at the wall, I think. Um, it happened with Zeta, I think, off the top of my head. And it just didn't really work out too well. Because they were just getting pinched too heavily. So I guess CR should try and split up a little bit here. But I think Satampo is lagging. It looks like he might get taken down here, unfortunately. Somehow he survives. <laughs> Even when he's lagging, he was getting some good jukes. So there's nothing they can do in that scenario. The only thing you can really do against a kit like this is you've got to beat it early. You've got to go in, you know, force Kit's hand pretty early on, make Kit use super, so then by the time the gas closes in, uh, Kit's got to be detached, really far from super, and of course that's where Kit is the most vulnerable. So here, again, you need to get the wide pinches going, try and pinch the buster back as much as possible, try and get them chip, chip down as much as possible. So we've got a gene pool here, but you can't really pull a buster. You can definitely pull a Kit. So Kit's going to go in aggro here. Does actually go with a couple of swipes and then jumps onto a uh, Charpy, which is pretty good. But then I think if uh, CR just play this right, play the patient game, they should be able to pick off the kit once it does detach. So here we go. So the aggro is going to go in here. Again, you might think it's a decent play jumping it on. But the problem is, is that now you're without super. Use this gadget, but that's not really going to build up too much. And so they need to go for the pool now. Oh, Moya just misses out of the pool. But that could be the difference maker here because they really needed that to take down Kit because Kit's just about to get super just in time. Saitampo gets his uh, Byron super. Perfect timing. And then a Grey super to top that off. And a uh, Gene hypercharge. So, I mean, Crazy Raccoon are looking solid. They could actually be in a position to free zero Na'Vi here, which would be a big statement, especially because... These are the two teams right now in APAC you look at. You know, Na'Vi joining the APAC region uh, pretty soon with literally a crazy roster. Uh, Moya goes for the pool here, but that is unfortunate timing, but it actually still gets the great, uh, the Gus down, and that's going to be a team wipe. I mean, that was just crazy altogether. The Gene Hypercharge is actually so underrated. Such a good um, Hypercharge, in my opinion, even though most of the time I end up missing it. Like, I, I was saying on stream, there should be like five Gene pools instead of three because I can't hit... Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty textbook from CR overall. Uh, so going into the next one, in terms of what Na'Vi need to be doing, again, it's just about being patient. Try not to waste your kit super too much. And I don't know, they need maybe like Gus to try and get some taps in just to alleviate a little bit of pressure. It is hard though. Like it is quite reliant on him. So this time around, I mean, they could just use Super now because by the time the gas goes in, he's actually going to use Super on the buy run. And that is a great play. That is a perfect, perfect play. I love that from Levi. The fact that he noticed, especially from across the map, that buy run was alone was great. The good thing is as well is that the CR comp... Okay, Kit just needs to go in here because, yeah, I was going to say Gus could actually get taken down. But yeah, the good thing is about the CR comp that kit will really like is that there's no like big heavy hitter so for example i hate it when i'm playing kit when i jump onto someone and there's like a piper there's like a nanny or there's someone that can just delete you so quick when you jump on an opponent you know see all composition you've got you've got gray you've got gene you've got brothers that literally tickle you so it's just such a good kit matchup it's unbelievable uh but this time around i mean we've got to be careful here i'll, I'll just jump on uh, the buster at this point because you don't want to risk getting gene pulled there's nothing that you can use to tank it 
Uh, looks like Suzuki's doing a great job of getting some taps onto the Gray for now. That's another miss pull from Moya. I mean, I, I can't talk about miss pulls because I miss everything, but it, it, it's tough. A knockout, literally every miss pull, it comes back to bite you. It really does. So the kit, um, Super didn't actually go onto Charpe, the right target here. So this is, this is where things can go bad. Just want to talk about one bad kit, Super. It's, you're pretty much a sitting duck like you just literally lose a round because you just waste your kit super eventually they're getting chipped down we use another gadget but i don't think that's really going to do too much i mean they're staying alive somehow and they do have a kit super in the end i mean they're, they're doing it but it looks like they might be doing it with a good shield as well this is just crazy they just can't kill them like that was crazy is me saying that they look pretty screwed and that is just the power of kit and buster right there so cheesy the healing on top of it it's just way too much uh, that's that synergy should just be banned like kit knockout just just ban that brawler it's just too cheesy like i've learned from ladder like the ladder warriors just abuse kit with everybody so the point i was gonna make as well it's like kit reminds me of like i don't know daryl edgar in that sense like if you mess up your super it takes so long to cycle back to your next super and of course that just leaves you in a vulnerable position and that's why a lot of those brothers aren't good in the meta but at least with edgar you can pop gadget and get your super back straight away with kit you can't do that anymore before you could with the gadget but the gadget got enough to three seconds well you're actually seeing a lot more now which i'm surprised levi's not running people just straight up use the cheeseburger gadget like i know uh the cardboard box gadget is good especially with invi uh, invisibility but three seconds it's not really going to do too much at least with cheeseburger it's just infinite heals you can just run around the map like crazy so looks like tensai sad tempo trying to get a bit of a pinch going here i mean sad tempo should just use probably super on the buster yep so he actually that's actually a decent counter to the kit because you got the malaise like look at this healing they're hardly even healing like 100 per second but again it's just they haven't got good enough brawlers to take them down like they've just got chip brawlers so whenever they get that synergy going there's nothing they can really do i mean south tampa here yeah it's just pretty screwed so Navi just one round away from winning this one it, it just it all looks pretty much over Navi have got the strategies sussed out see i'm really trying to pull everything out of the bag but i just don't think there's enough that they can really do maybe tensai just needed to use walking cane especially like to try and confirm some kills early on that would probably be my suggestion looks like they're able to get the kit down but at the same time they do lose uh so tampo but they've got a pressure going here the problem is Gus has a shield which i mean keeps him alive for a little bit but the pinches are just coming in so strong from cr looks like it turns i can get the kill onto him and then it's 2v1 scenario it's pretty much looking over i guess the job here is try not feed Jin. i mean he's just got a super so chop is just trying to get his super here there's like pretty much nothing else he can really do is though i mean moya shouldn't really pull him because buster can probably get a double kill yeah there's just nothing they can do i guess chop is just trying to heal up trying to get his super eventually here the gas is going to close in i mean this is just boring come on choppy just let it go i mean he's just letting it go i don't know <laughs> i get I, I think what he was actually doing there is probably just like wasting the time uh so he could talk to his teammates i mean that could be a good strategy we've got kit invisibility here, not really doing too much but the moya hypercharge this is literally one round away from winning winning the whole series which i've not even highlighted yet which is just crazy free free zero sweeping navi would be some achievement and definitely some statements so good push up from navi here they're going a lot more aggressively this time around i guess they kind of have to with a hypercharge gene super and they get the double pull here but that's just pff, that's actually just screwed them over i mean that is something you don't want to do you don't want to pull them in that scenario especially a buster and a kit with splash damage like you just don't want to do that but that's going to be the set going towards Na'Vi there. 2-1. Let's hop into the next one. So jumping into set number four, we've got Gem Grab Rustic Arcade. So again, another map that is removed from the rotation. So not much you can kind of learn from ranks, but you can still learn just from the plays and the drafting. So Gene first pick, pretty solid overall with the hypercharge. I've kind of just learned that. And then Bell and Ruff. So two great counters to Gene. You might not think because Bell can't tank a Gene pool. But the reason why Bell's so good into Gene is because you stop them from grouping up, especially with the Magic Puff star power. Maybe they might switch over to the other star power, but probably not because they're using Max. I mean, that is the scariest thing you could possibly ever see on your screen. Ten sign Max. You just... I think if I was to return to Pro ever again, 
I would just ban Max all of the time against Tenzai. I mean, I don't think that would actually even stop him from beating me. But you know what I mean? That's just an instant ban. I'm not letting that through ever. So in terms of the last pick, they could go with a Sandy. So again, a G-Max Sandy synergy. I don't know if it would be the best on Rustic Arcade though to go with Amber. So again, I'm seeing a lot of like Max and Amber combinations. The reason being is because there's certain brawlers in the game that just benefit so much from any type of speed. So you just think of Amber, for example, when she pops her gadget, she's just insane because she can just latch onto you and just delete you like the second she gets within your range you're pretty much dead so imagine a max speed with that that's pretty insane and then you just remember like um amber in the past when she was first released i think she had fast or very fast movement speed i know she was faster than she is now and that was one of the reasons why she was insane so you know give her that previous speed that she had and she'll just melt everyone so in terms of compositions i do like the crazy raccoon comp a lot more i mean stu does counter max somewhat and is okay into Amber. But I, th I think composition-wise, again, Sly Tempo is lagging a bit. It's, it's always him, unfortunately. This normally isn't an issue, but standing still in any point in time of the game, it is just... It, you just hate to see it. I, it just triggers something inside of me because I've suffered with bad Wi-Fi for a lot of time throughout competitive, like, so much. You wouldn't even believe it. So it's just seeing that, it, it angers me. There's nothing worse than lagging in-game. But it looks like he's reconnected here. Against the Ruffs, it's going to be pretty hard. Ruffs was insane in Rustic Arcade because of the pinches that you could get. You could literally pinch yourself every lane. Like, you didn't even need a teammate. That's an insane pull from Moya, by the way. Really love to see it. So, we're actually changing the strategies here. We're going with Gene Lane and we're going with Max Mid. Main reason being is because Max is just not going to be a good lane against um, Levi. Levi on Stu, by the way, is insane. I've seen this. A lot last year in monthly finals. We didn't get to see it in the world finals because unfortunately they didn't make it through at uh, last chance qualifiers. But that'd be good to see. I mean, that is some great taps from the bell. And now a rough gadget basically. Oh, Moya just missing out on that pool. And I don't know, was Saitampo expecting that pool to hit? I'm not too sure what was his Wi Fi kind of lagging. I thought that he could have used his super a lot sooner there. But unfortunate timing there. Looks like. Na'Vi should be able to hold this on unless Tensai just does the maddest thing. I, don't, I mean, even Tensai can't do anything in that scenario. Does pop hypercharge as well. So, unfortunately, that is wasted. Still somehow survives that for as long as possible. And is it Jemison spawn? Or did he actually pinch some spawn? I think they actually saved that. He did save that. Okay. I, I, I thought there was some Jemison spawn still. But Levi's going to get a lot of pressure. Does get pinched down there eventually here. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, Tensai is literally him. He was able to get some gems. Stop the reset. And uh, we've got a Gene Hypercharge pull here. Tensai's just trying to work Wiggle, trying to get uh, his super so he can work with Moya. That's a great pull there. And now the countdown going for CR, but they need to get another gem. That's a great pickup from the bell because now the next gem is on their side. They should be able to get this with a Ruffs power up. And the gem is right there for the take him. Should be able to get it. And that's got to be pretty bad for Crazy Raccoon. But another max super here. Tensai is getting tapped by the bell. Even with a hypercharge. Which is kind of crazy to me. But now Moya with a pull. He needs to really hit this one. Especially if he hits it. They pretty much win this. Suzuki with a great bell tap. That is insane. He's playing crazy on the bell by the way. Like I see why bell is a common ban in APAC. If they can just do this with bell all the time. Like that's just insane to me. But this is crazy. 50 seconds left. 12-12 in gems. Moya trying to go. I mean, he can't really pull a stew, especially with Super. But he can now. He's in a great position to pull the stew. Does still hold on to the pull right here. I guess if he does miss it, it's just going to be even worse for them. Looks like Tensai actually pinches a gem. But overextends a little bit. And now just Moya in the position. And Na'Vi can just clean it up. That is very unfortunate. Like, it was really good heads up play but i just think that cr weren't in the position to then get the gems that he dropped like i see that a lot from good players like they'll um they'll like pick up the last gem or something like that and then they know their teammates can collect the gems anyways behind them and because of that how that interaction works they just win overall but unfortunately didn't have like a gadget to kind of save him and navi and now one round away from taking it to a set five a reverse sweep that would be pretty insane and they also got the reject form sleeves here. Yeah, you love to see the small things. I mean, I, I, they were handing loads of them out. Um, I think at one fleet uh, at World Finals. I wish I would have got some. Anyways, the synergy going here. I mean, pff, Levi is just absolutely tapping. Like I, I told you last year, this guy is absolutely cracked. He, he's insane. 
actually crazy. Some really good pressure right there. Unfortunately, I think he misses out on his super. So if Moya is um, careful, he can just keep Stu away from his super. But I guess Leo's just pushing straight up. The thing about uh, Gene Lane is that he deals no damage. Literally, anyone can just run into a Gene. And look at this again. He gets a double kill. And that is just a go-to play. Does actually get his super as well. Like, you can't stop this guy and Stu. He's just gliding. Actually gliding. I, I need some Stu lessons from this guy. Like, I thought we had some good Stu's in EMEA. We were like... I know there's so many good Stu's in EMEA. I can't even name one off the top of my head. But, like, this, this guy is putting all of them to shame. Like, look at this. Just consistently hitting the shots. Getting the pressure. So now we only need two gems. So we don't even need to make any wild plays to win this game. Levi again getting some good taps. So hypercharge pops, which might be wasted because Tensai can get a lot of pressure. I mean, CR got control here. No max super to go though. They've got some uh, gadgets left from Tensai though. So Tampa's going to push forward. Does actually push into the roof's gadget, but still somehow stays alive. This is looking good for Crazy Raccoon. We've got a gene pool. They're about to probably to get max super as well. I think Tensai uses running gun though. So. I guess that doesn't get charged up automatically. I mean, he's 10 sides. He's going to use running gun because he can just juke his way up and hit those shots. Again, a gene pool can be used to hit the bell easily. Can't really hit uh, Levi, though. Levi's going to get some decent pressure. Doesn't really correlate to much, though. But now, Moyel with the pool again. He's holding on to it, which is clever because if anyone push forward, he can just get an easy pull. 10 side with the 10th gem here. This is just... It's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I just don't know who's going to win this one. Levi's getting kind of pinched here, getting low. Now the 11th gem going CR's way, but Moya does get picked off. And now the gem's going the way of Na'Vi. Again, it's just like things are just tiniest margins falling apart for CR. I felt like they really should have won that uh, one, but we still get this, still get a countdown, especially with a Gene Hypercharge. Does run out the unfortunate time and does get one gem, but they need that gem in the middle. Can Tentai get it in time? Ooh! He got it in time. And now a hypercharged max super. This is looking dangerous for um, Na'Vi here. Especially with a hypercharged max. Moya goes down again eventually. I mean, not eventually. Just, just gets destroyed. Off. I don't know whether he was lagging there. He did die pretty quickly. But 12 to 12 gems again. But we do have Tensai with a gadget here. That can definitely save him in some scenarios. But they're getting pressured all the way back. Satampo gets pinched out. Levi gets supered. I think he's going to go down here. And that's going to be this countdown reset. Another gem going the way of Crazy Raccoon. But they need to get this next gem. Actually, it doesn't even matter. Because the, the second... Uh, well, the actual last gem is going to spawn on their side. So you see here, he's kind of reluctant to pick that one up and does actually get taken down. Luckily for him, CR have got him covered and that's going to be the game going towards their favor. Wow, Rustic Arcade is a nail biter. Like, it's just back and forth, back and forth. Because of how open it is, good teams, I guess. If you guys didn't know, like, uh, I mean, most of you guys should know. A gem spawns on each side every, I don't know, six, seven seconds. So... In Rustic Arcade, I think it's just pretty hard to, um, like, get in the spawn. That's that's kind of where things go wrong in Gem Grab. Where, like, Hard Rock Mine, Double Swoosh, you can normally push up and spawn trap. And then you can start getting that big advantage. In Rustic Arcade, you can't really spawn trap, can you? Like, you're always going to get pinched out. So that's why you're seeing some really close Gem Grab games at the moment. Uh, but it's all about the start, I believe. Like, you can get the best start. I mean, you can see here, again, he gets the gem on the side of CR. So now he's he's going to be winning the gem count uh, comfortably. So that's a crazy tap from Bell. Like, he's actually him at the moment. He's playing exceptionally well today. He's got the roofs power up as well. And into a gene in the mid is actually pretty good for him because he's got the shield gear. That's going to be the... Oh, okay. That is a great pull from Moya. Unfortunately, Tensai can't really follow up. Levi just cleans up. And they've just got all of the gems together now. That's going to be the 8th gem, I think, spawning on their side. I don't think they're going to be able to push up. But the problem is now is that Levi has the gems as a Stu. I mean, uh, Stu can play gem carrier, but now he can't really go as aggro. But again, he is a good player, so I guess he can just still go in aggro down the lane. He does have a gadget as well to tank a gene pool, so just bear that in mind. Now he's going to go for the pressure. Look at that. That is perfect play. I literally just called it. I just called it. You can't pull a Stu if he's still got a gadget. You just can't do that. It doesn't work around here. But now all they need is one gem. It just seems like Levi always manages to get his super with Stu. Even when he hasn't got one. Do you get what I mean? Like in that scenario, I thought he shouldn't have got it. Then he did. 
I mean, now just Tensai alive. Surely Tensai can't 1v3. I mean, it is Tensai, but yeah, there's just too much for him to do. Now they can get a reset on either the Stu or the Bell. I think Bell is the easiest target here. They need a Gene Pool. They need a Max Stu, but they need something to go in their favor. Now a 2v2. Unfortunately, Moyo goes down. And then just, yeah, there's just too much for Tensai to really do there. So we're going to set number five. I think Na'Vi played that one pretty well. I think Levi just absolutely can't. I mean, the other guys played well. But Levi and the Bell together just played so strong. Alright guys, jumping into the fifth and final set. We love a good game five, but at the same time, I'm kind of sick of seeing game fives on center stage. Why is it always center stage? Like the past two MEA monthly finals, I think I've been decided on center stage. I guess it's still fun to watch because it is a brubble. So you can see the picks just fly for your screen right here so we see the shelly band which is pretty interesting like that's a brawler which people wouldn't really consider that strong in the meta but in center stage pretty good overall larry and laurie from navi which i guess are pretty good on this map because like throws can be annoying on center stage the problem is at the same time if you go like a tank uh you can pretty much counter them easily and i can already kind of see that in navi's draft like i see a sandy i see a larry and laurie i mean they're not like tanks aren't completely broken against them but get what i mean they're all quite low dps brawlers like for me i'd straight away go like i don't know how buster haven't hasn't been picked yet i don't know how rosa is just kind of sneak through charlie okay so i would still go rosa into this like i know you're gonna feed a lot of sandy supers and whatever else but i think rosa would cause a lot of pressure and big problems to them they do have last picks so i've got a lot to consider here i'm trying to think any other brawlers to top of my head um Again, Buster would still be decent. We've got to be careful, though, because... Squeak. Okay. Oh, bro. APAC love their Squeak. They love their Squeak. I mean, Squeak is good into this. Like, it's decent. But they really, really like their Squeak. I'm seeing it played so much still in APAC and everywhere else, so just don't consider it. I guess the good thing about Squeak is that he's got his residue gadget, especially on a grassy map. It just gives you ultimate lane control. It's a, like... It's an okay matchup into a thrower. It's good against Charlie because, of course, it can just keep distance against Charlie. I know, it can not work out. This is going to be a little bit of a weird one because Nita's going to struggle to get bear, I think, most of the time against this comp. But then if she does get bear, then she can get a lot of pressure. Rico hasn't really got the best of matchups, but at the same time, he's going to be able to just scout pushes really easily against the Sandy and everyone else. Sandy already gets super, which is crazy. He does waste his Sandy super, though, I believe. I mean, he allows his teammates to push up. But I'd have liked for that one to be saved. So then he could cycle through to his next one. But it doesn't matter. They've got complete map control here. They've got a thrower as well. Especially on center stage. Like the hard thing is. You normally need a wall break or a thrower to score. So that's one thing I'm going to keep an eye on with Crazy Raccoon. And look at this. Charlie can just sneak through. And get the goal. That is a beautiful play so far. 1-0 for Na'Vi. And it's just, it's just going from bad for, to worse for CR. Surely they can't get reverse swept here. So... Rico Super going down and bro, that is insane. They could just push forward. Just a Sandy on defense. Sandy might be able to get the ball here with a gadget. Oh, looks like CR might mess this one up. Achape somehow gets the ball in his hands. And I don't know how they just saved that. I mean, Moyo's still alive with the healing from the bear. I don't know how he made it out alive, but that is a bit of a chance. I mean, it's a good play, I think, from the Sandy being able to save that one. It was just unfortunate timing. Moya has his hypercharge super, I believe, or close, yeah, just have hypercharge super here. So he's gonna throw that out. Does push them all the way back. Look at this, the amount of pressure that that just got. I know it didn't really like kill them or anything, but that just put them all the way into a corner. Now side tempo can just do side tempo things. Should be able to get the kill here, and then that's gonna be the goal. So one thing to bear in mind as well, like you probably don't see side tempo much on Rico, but I just remember facing off against him in scrims. This was like two, three years ago, by the way. But he played Rico, and I thought I was a good Rico. And he just destroyed me. I was like, okay, this guy's just cracked on this brawler. Uh, like, I remember watching it, I, I don't know when it was, a couple of years ago. He played it on Hard Rock Mine against someone, and he just destroyed it everyone. And that's when people really, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying this, I've never just walked through him anyways. But yeah, back on my story, which you guys don't care about. <laughs> Is that people realized for the first time that he was just absolutely cracked when he just 1v3 with Rico on Hard Rock Mine. But Na'Vi, let's talk about them. I don't know why I'm just giving CR the plaudits all the time because they're one game away from getting the reverse sweep, which would be crazy, especially because they missed out on the first monthly final. To do this against CR would be insane. 
I guess one thing you actually have to consider, which the casters can't really talk about, is the internet connection. Like, that is a big tilting factor, and a factor you shouldn't really have to consider when you're playing a monthly final, but it, it does it does affect the mental, even of the most resilient players, like Tensai, for example. If you're constantly lagging, you're going to rage. Like, who doesn't rage at lag, for example? But that's a great takedown from Tensai. I guess with the squeak, with the amount of HP he, can, uh, he has, he can push forward pretty easily. So now they've got map control, it's going to be really hard to push up against the Rico and a squeak just constantly spamming and not letting you heal up. Rico's super going down here, gets a lot of damage, but Levi gets the kill there. Sandy super to establish a bit more control. That's going to be squeak pushed pretty far back. We've got a Larry super here, which is going to get taken down pretty quickly. I'm not too sure about the timing on that. That's just completely wasted. And it's going to take a while to cycle through it. So that's why I think Larry is a bit... I don't know. Like, I think everyone's just scarred from how broken he was. I'm just not really feeling Larry and Laurie in this meta. I just think it takes too long to get his super. And it just feels too easy to take down. Like, that's just my opinion. I'm not really seeing Larry do all too much. I guess the good thing about him is that... It, it, like, as a thrower, he's not really too suspect to aggro brawlers. So that's why he's good in the draft. But I don't know. Like, I've been playing... A bit of Larry recently and I just don't really feel it. I just feel like other throw is just a bit better, a bit more consistent. But Sad Tampo should be able to get the pressure here. Ten tight with a walk in and that's gonna be beautiful so far. So now only fifty seconds remaining for Navi to get an equalizer. I've got another um super here from Laurie though. He's gonna push in. Just get slowed by the squeak <laughs> gadget mode, which is just hilarious to see. Levi's gonna push forward with his hypercharge. Doesn't actually really get a hypercharge super, but it doesn't even matter because they get a goal. Good retaliation from Narvi there. Some good pressure, some good takedowns, good teamwork. And now we've got a Sandy Super to work with. So this is all about whether they can get value out of a Sandy Super. If they can push forward and get some kills, they will literally just win this whole series. But it looks like Levi didn't cycle that, which is definitely gonna hurt him in the long run a good super this time from a charpe because laurie is going to be able to get some pressure here levi's going to push forward side tempo is going to get um put into the cocoon just get taken down double kill right there and navi should be able to score this one in surely and they could just walk that one in okay that is just absolutely crazy so did they just win that whole series did they win that whole series because they haven't even brought a reaction to it did they win the whole series? I think they did, right? Surely? Surely, hello? Like, did they win the whole series? Yes, they did. Okay, they did win the whole series. I mean, I was just like... I was, I was expecting a reaction from Levi there. But they, they were able to win that in <laughs> Brawl Sorry for the anti-climatic ending. But even myself there was like, did they actually win that? But yeah, that's going to be Na'Vi winning 3-2. Again, I think this situation around it is really unfortunate for CR. I guess that's probably why I didn't see a reaction from Levi because he knew that they had some connection issues. But other than that, it was still a really good game. So I'm glad I, I, I took a, a look at this because it's interesting to see the meta and everything else. But maybe some, like if situation was different, maybe it would have been a different outcome. But again, you've got to give credits to Na'Vi where it's due. But still managed to get a reverse sweep, which deserves some big credits. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.